Refuge Online, we are back for two more weeks and we are believing that today is gonna be a special Sunday. We are pumped to have someone who is no longer a guest at the Refuge, but his family. And that's Darius Sneed leading us in worship today. I encourage you to lean in and encounter God today. Give him what's on your mind, what's on your heart, and just give whatever situation you might have to him. And most of all, give him the praise that he deserves. Let's worship. Well, hey, church, how you doing today? My name is Darius, and I am so excited again to be with you all today. We are going to worship Jesus. Let us set our eyes, focus our attention on him. And remember, he loved you so much. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Y'all ready to sing? I'm ready to sing. Won't you join me? This is Echo. Let's sing together. When the night is falling and fear is coming, Still you're calling me, When faith is lost, my hope exhausted, yes, you will be my strength. Yes, when my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me, yeah. And I've decided I'm not good enough, cause you won't give up on me. Yes, church, the Lord loves us so much. I'm learning that in my life even now, no matter what I've done or what I've done today, God loves us. I was reading this scripture yesterday and it just reminded me of his love and I wanna read it over you in Romans 8, 37 through 39. It says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
for I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's how much God loves us. And in this time, we need to know that. So we respond by singing. Oh, things have passed away And your love has stayed the same Your constant grace remains the cornerstone
for your amazing love, your amazing grace, and our response will always be worship, hands lifted, receiving, but yet giving our love back to you, for you deserve it, and you're worthy of it, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Darius, so much for leading us today in worship. If you enjoyed that, I encourage you to just give him, give him a clap and hands in the chat, encourage him, tell him thank you. Uh, that was just incredible. Thank you so much. So come on, Refuge. You know what time it is next. It is our time to share. It's a minute where we take time to invite, to text, to share on Facebook, and just let people know in your lives what's going on at our church. Let's really make these last two Sundays count here at Refuge Online. People need to hear this message of Jesus. Us. So ready, set, share. Refuge Church, if you were at our last Sunday's drive-in service, you've heard the exciting news. And if you weren't, fear not, I'll tell you today. We are so excited to announce that Sunday, September 20th, the Refuge will start to meet again weekly in person. This is gonna look a little bit different as we get back to it, but we're gonna start with four Sundays of drive-in church, and we cannot be more excited to meet in the same place consistently for that stretch and period of time. Six months of not being together has officially come to an end and we are so excited and want you to do everything possible to be there with us as we kick it off september 20th and look out for all the details to come on social media church today i want to encourage you in our time of giving over the last few weeks our church has been doing everything we possibly can to meet the needs of people and show them the love of jesus in a practical way so if you're a guest this morning, there's absolutely no pressure to give. We're just so thankful and happy that you're here with us. But if Refuge is your home and you're building church with us, now is your time to give and let's just make it our best. Remember that you're not giving to a church, but you're giving through a church. Just recently, our Refuge family was able to go out and donate a $400 check to a local elementary school nearby to help out with school supplies as kids went back to school. And just last week, at our drive-in service, we were able to give Maggie, who leads worship with our worship team, a brand new guitar because her guitar was stolen uh, at the break-in that happened a few weeks back. And it's because of your giving, church, that we're able to do things like this. Your giving is helping us build a new home. Your giving is helping us meet the needs of so many people in our world. Your giving matters. And please know, please know that your giving matters and we're so grateful for that. Because, because of that, we're able to build and continue to build the vision of the refuge. The Bible says in Psalms 112, verse five, good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Good is coming to the generous. It's the promise of God. So today as you give, check out a recap of our driving service last weekend. You will see Maggie's guitar giveaway too. And then just after that, my beautiful wife, Drea Luster, is gonna come and preach today, and I know it's gonna change your life. 
Let's check it out. party people and welcome to the refuge. My name is Drea Lester and I it's, it's just so good to be with you here online. I along with the most incredible dream team this world has to offer. This except they're on the other side of this camera today. We all to, all together all of us we work every week to bring you guys an online experience and a drive-in experience that I hope you've enjoyed throughout this season. But, you know, this is my first online service that I get to do, and I'm super excited. Um, but not only is it my first online service, it's also the first time I get to speak with a baby in my belly. So I'm really excited. So me and this baby girl, we're going to preach to you today about peace. So let's get into it. The title for this message is Peace in the Streets. I chose this title because I feel like it's just so perfect for the times that we're in right now when it seems like there's absolutely no peace in our streets. Like what is really going on in our streets right now? And I'm talking personally, locally, nationally, there's just so much unsettled and it can drive us to really lack a sense of peace. You know, when this quarantine first started, I don't think anyone knew how serious or how long this was going to be. So when it first started, I'm like, this is incredible. This is like adult summer. This is my chance to do all the things I've been wanting to do. I'm going to go on walks in the morning. I'm going to take care of myself. And then May started coming and I'm like, okay, this isn't fun anymore. This is actually kind of scary. And I want to go places and I want to see people and I don't want to be worried about catching the virus or a loved one catching the virus. And then I got pregnant. Right around the time that the CDC put pregnant women at a higher risk for the virus. Like, I wish that I was making this up, but the day that we went in for our first appointment was the day after the CDC hired the risk. I mean, talk about a lack of peace. So when Pastor David asked me to talk about peace, I texted him back and I'm like, okay, are you challenging me? Because you know that I'm having anxiety about all this going on. And we both laughed. But peace is what I really want to talk about today and how we can use this time that we're in to put more peace in our streets. So first we have to unpack what is peace. 
The Hebrew word for peace is shalom, and it has a wide range of meanings, including totality or completeness, success, fulfillment, wholeness, harmony, and security. Peace is often associated with God's presence as well. For example, in the song that we love so much, The Blessing, it comes from number six. And in verse 20, it says, the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. But peace like creation, it's not an accident. It's not this condition invented by psychology. God designed it. He understands it and he gives it to those he calls. You know, peace is listed as the top three characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. Without love, joy, and peace, there's really little hope of accomplishing kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of these characteristics are dependent on the love, joy, and peace of God. You see, peace is not ours to keep, but ours to share. The peace of God, it has to be so evident in us. Others need to see what we have and desire to have it. So then that, that means we must be peacemakers, able to share the love of God with a troubled world, bringing peace to our streets. And Jesus follows with this statement. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and give it and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. It's Matthew 5:14 through 16. And you know what's cool about peace is that it has this dual nature. It can be felt, felt both in its absence and its presence. For example, in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, you see there that the absence of peace is disorder, insecurity, uncertainty, worry, fear, and anxiety. But the presence of peace, like we just spoke about, it brings serenity and tranquility, harmony, contentment, security, safety. I can go on. And that's found in Isaiah 32, 17 through 19. Now, I, of all people, I struggle with a lack of peace, sometimes even daily. Now, I know what you're thinking. And don't you have a master's in clinical mental health? And you're telling me you deal with anxiety? Um, hello, yes, I am breathing. So naturally, I will deal with it from time to time. But what I love about all of this is that in this time of pandemic and worry and lack of peace, it's really driven me to study peace as a whole. So today, I promise you, I am not just preaching to the choir. I am, I mean, I'm not, sorry, I'm not just speaking to you. I am totally preaching to the choir. <laughs> Proverbs 12, 25 says, anxiety in a man or a woman's heart, it weighs us down, but a good word makes us glad. So today, I hope to bring you a good word. There's three words I want to define for you before we move forward. And those words are fear, anxiety, and worry. Because I think it's important for us to know the difference and what we're fighting against daily. We need to know our enemy. So fear, it happens in the presence of whatever scares a person. Anxiety involves imagined threat that may or may not happen. And worry is a specific type of anxiety in which we repeatedly think about feared outcomes in situations involving uncertainty. Now, don't let that give you anxiety hearing about the definitions of anxiety. <laughs> there's healthy anxiety and there's unhealthy anxiety. And I love to explain it to past clients like this. We all experience anxiety. For example, speaking in front of a group can make us anxious, whether that's online or that's in front of actual people. But that anxiety also motivates us to prepare and to practice like me last night in front of my bed with a remote practicing this. 
<laughs> Driving in heavy traffic is also another common source of anxiety, but it helps keep us alert and cautious to avoid accidents. Now, when those feelings of intense fear and distress, they become so overwhelming that they prevent us from doing everyday activities, that's unhealthy anxiety. And there's many different anxiety disorders. However, all anxiety disorders have one thing in common, persistent and excessive fear or worry. Now, for me, working in mental health, I, I want to be so mindful of those who have experienced great trauma. And from that trauma resulted anxiety. Sometimes we can't really prevent things from happening in our lives. And I want to be sensitive to those who have en endured situations that have stolen their peace. I'm here today to tell you that you can work through it. You can see and feel peace again. I'm on my way to being a therapist by trade, but I'm a believer by nature. And I believe that we serve a God who can heal you from anxiety and fear and worry because you are so, so special. Those who are paralyzed by fear, it's robbing you of your life. I'm here today to tell you peace in Jesus name. Those who are ridden with insomnia and cannot sleep because they're so overcome by worry, I pray peace in Jesus name. Those who are stuck in an obsessive compulsive cycle that is stealing hours from your life as a result of fear, I pray peace in Jesus' name. With the help of a therapist, a professional, and Jesus' healing power, for anyone watching today who have been robbed of peace, I pray today you cannot get this message out of your head. I'm believing peace for you in Jesus' name. You know, Matthew 6, 25 through 34, the NLT version is really the meat of my talk today. And I want to read it before moving forward. You'll see it on the screen. And we'll start with 25. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in the barns for your heavenly father feeds them and aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. The message version that 30, that verse 34, it says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Did you notice he said, don't worry four times? I think any time someone says something more than once, it's important to listen. And he said it four times. So I don't know about you, but I'm listening. And today I really want to break this section of Matthew down. So four points today to get some peace in our streets. So my girls, Jen, Laura, where are you at? Get your notebooks out. I love to see your notes each week. Here is point number one. Your life is more than anything this world has to offer. Water, clothes, basic necessities, you can put anything in that blank. Your life is so much more than whether you get married or not. Your life is so much more whether you'll have kids or whether you're able to buy that house. Your life is so much more than about what school you're going to get into 
or what job you have, or even more specifically in this time that we're in right now, your life is more than what political issue is being debated right now. Yet we waste so much of our lives worried over all of these what ifs. We lose time over what others will think. So what is your life about? Well, guess what? I'm going to tell you right now in point number two, you are welcome. Number two is your life is about trusting the God who values you. Birds. So who knew birds were the antidote to anxiety? Like I need to call a few of my past clients back and let them know. Like, I can guarantee you no birds are worried about what's going on right now. I don't see any birds in my neighborhood glued to CNN or Fox News. The birds know what is up. Verse 26 says, look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? And I just really love the message version. It just like really hits you where it hurts. And it says, look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than birds, like careless in the care of God. I feel like I'm going to start using that. Like that's gold, careless in the care of God. That's what I want to be. But they know these birds, they know that God will provide for them. And if God provides for birds, how much more for us who are eternally valued? In verse 28, it says, or he starts talking about the flowers and how they're dressed. How long do flowers last? Like, come on, not very long if you're giving them to me. Like, I really, really try, but I do not have a green thumb whatsoever. But let's put this in perspective, whether they last long or not, flowers are so beautiful. Only God could have designed them with such creativity and beauty that we give them to people to celebrate. We give them to people when they're sick and they need healing. And we give them to people when they're in pain. And they last a day, but we as humans, we last forever. So why are we worried about what to wear? when God is going to dress us in eternal glory. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm the first person to check out a sale or buy clothes. My husband can attest to this. But really, really think about this. Why are we worried about our paycheck when God is going to give us the whole earth as our inheritance? And why are we worried about our positions at work when we are going to reign in God's kingdom forever? And why are we worried about our health or our loved one's health when God himself has guaranteed us eternal life? Now that, that right there really checked me because the few times I have had so much anxiety, it's, it's, it's given me an anxiety attack it's been over worrying about my husband or my dad or a loved one. But as I was studying this verse, God was really getting me. We cannot live in each day in worry over things that may not even happen. Our life is so much more than these thoughts that are weighing us down. And that brings me to point number three. And if you have not listened to anything I've said, this point right here is so, so special. Point number three, God knows what you need. He does. He really does before we do better than we even know. You thought it was Amazon who had all you need. I know. I know until everyone started buying Clorox wipes and hand sanitizer, and now they don't have everything you need. <laughs> but with God, the supply line is always full. He never runs out of courage when you're afraid. He never runs out of hope when you're hurting. Every moment for all of eternity, he will supply all that we need. Can you imagine telling yourself that from now on? because I've been doing it since I started studying this and it's been really, it's been really working for me. My dad, he recently had wrist surgery. He had carpal tunnel and some other things. And if you remember, I had just mentioned he's one of my anxiety triggers. 
And so he went in early at 530 in the morning um, and it was an outpatient procedure. And I'm sure to some, it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. But for me, it started to create a lot of anxiety, especially because right now with everything going on, no one was allowed to go in with him. He had to go in by himself. And I don't know about you, but how many of you have hit the point in your life where you feel like your parent, you have to parent your parent? I don't know if it's my age or this baby, but I'm constantly on my parents' house, specifically my dad, because he can be a little stubborn at times. So much so that I'll text him and say, don't forget to do this and don't forget to take this. And he will respond, yes, mother. <laughs> If you feel me, type in the chat box, amen, because I totally parent my parent. Well, all of these thoughts started racing into my head when he was going into surgery. All these, what if this happens or what if that happens? And I had worked on most of this message by this point. And so, of course, I'm a one on the Enneagram, if any of you know about the Enneagram. And so I'm like, I cannot physically tell this message to people and not practice what I preach. Like I need to practice what I'm saying. So I quickly put myself in check and I just kept praying, God, you know what my dad needs. You know what my dad needs. And I just kept repeating that to myself. Anytime a thought would come into my head where I would worry or be fearful. And you know what? My dad came out of surgery. He's doing great. He's barely listening to his recovery rules, but he's doing great. And I didn't have a panic attack and everything was fine. You know, some of you may know our dog passed away a few weeks ago, very suddenly. And he meant the world to me and my husband, but specifically my husband. And that day after it had happened, we were laying in bed in such pain. And I kept thinking, God, you know what we need. You know what we need, even in the middle of heartbreak. God knows what we need. He really does. Now, point number four, God guarantees you mercy today for trouble today and mercy tomorrow for trouble tomorrow. Now, this is life changing because there's so many things that we worry about that are so future oriented. We have no business worrying about them. Let's keep it real here. Like who knows what the news is going to say tomorrow or what COVID is going to look like tomorrow? Not me, not one of us. But what do we know? That new mercies are waiting for us tomorrow. So in that, we live each day to the absolute fullest. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Now, in closing, I want to give you two tools you can walk away with. If you've heard me speak before, you know that I always love to give you homework, <laughs> at least something. So the first one is biblical and simple, and it's what I kind of spoke about already. The next time that you're faced with a lack of peace, I want you to repeat this to yourself. God knows what I need. I promise you, it'll really put things into perspective. And it's really, really been helping me. The next one is clinical by nature, and it's called mindfulness. And it's all the rage these days. And that's for a reason. It works. It's proven. Research tells us that mind our mind focuses on things other than what's happening right now. Most of the time we're thinking about events that have either already happened or might happen in the future. So our well-being, our mental health is often affected by things that have little to do with the moment in which we find ourselves in. And now that we've studied Matthew, we know that God calls us to be present and worry about today only. In the process of worrying, we miss the once in a lifetime experience that each moment offers. And I don't know about you, but life is so short. And especially with this baby girl on the way, I don't want to miss a moment. So mindfulness is a practice that can help us focus on the present. And training in mindfulness 
it helps with a wide range of conditions. Therapists have used mindfulness to help with anxiety, ADHD, depression, eating disorders, anger, insomnia, OCD, relationship difficulties. I mean, you name it. Many therapists incorporate these techniques into their treatment plan. So this is the real deal and you get to get it for free today. Anxiety and fear and worry, they grab our attention and they pull us into the future. But with practice, we can train our minds to come back to the present and we disengage from those future oriented fears. And that will allow anxiety and worry and fear to loosen its grip. So how do we do it? We do it with what we call the three senses. And this is just one simple technique and there's many of them, but this is the one I want you to take home today. It's simply to notice what you're experiencing right at that moment with three senses, sound, sight, and touch. Take a few slow breaths when you feel like you're getting worked up with anxiety and worry and fear and think about what are three things you can hear right at that moment, whether that's a clock on the wall or music in the car, then what are three things you can see? I can see this table, I can see this laptop, and I can see this floor. And what are three things I can feel? I can feel this table, I can feel this laptop, I can feel this microphone. Think of these answers to yourself slowly, one sense at a time. It's impossible to do this exercise and not be present and mindful. When you catch yourself being caught up in worries about the future or regret from the past or whatever it is, just notice that it's happening and simply and kindly say to yourself, come back. What are three things I can feel? Three things I can see? Three things I can hear? It's it's easier said than done, but like anything important, we take time and we work on these things until it's a way of life. In closing, I want to share an excerpt from Dr. David Jeremiah. He writes in the sanctuary, all too often we lose our peace in the midst of tragedy and the circumstances of life. When we do that, we have nothing to offer a watching world. If a neighbor comes to us distraught over tragedy and finds us just as undone, what testimony have we given about the peace of Christ, which he promised? It is the Christians in a community who should be able to offer a word of encouragement and comfort during difficult times. But we can only do that if we possess the peace of Christ, that peace which he purchased for us at the price of his own blood. There is nothing more blessed than sowing peace into the lives of those around you. There's so much going on in this world right now, politically, racially, medically, everywhere. People need Jesus and the only source of peace. He's the only source of peace and we have what they need. So let's practice this ourselves so that we can offer it to others and bring peace to our streets. I hope that with us today, it's equipped you to practice a little more peace. I want to pray for you today because I know this is, this one's a heavy hitter. It's much easier said than done to have peace, but let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time that we have together, that we get to still be together, whether that's online or in person. And and I just want to pray for those that are dealing with a lack of peace. Father, you give us the peace that passes understanding. You tell us that in your word. And I just pray for those that may be struggling with that today. We know that Only you can give us that sense of peace. We love you and we thank you today. Let us be peacemakers. Feel it in our lives and are able to give it and share it. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for tuning in and joining us today at Refuge Online. Thank you, Drea, for that incredible message on peace. We just pray that the peace of God just invades your life and that you have the best week ever. We love you, church.